Welcome to our newest uh, podcast episode. Uh, my name is Jonas. Um, I'm joined by two, two fantastic youth leaders here as well uh, today, Paloma and David. Um, I'm going to introduce them in a minute. But first, of course, uh, we want to introduce the podcast episode. So we're now in Cast Bridging Voices. Um, our newest episode is together with um, our two uh, young persons here from Paraguay and uh, from Costa Rica um, on the developments in the EU Latin America relationship, especially because they were together with a program of CAS Partidos from Uruguay and the CAS Mnet office this week in Brussels, um, and also met a lot of like interesting people, which they um, can, of course, tell us a little bit more about it. But first of all, I want to introduce them. So we have David Rodriguez here. He's the treasurer of the party Unidad Social Castellana uh, from Costa Rica. And then we have Paloma Savin here, who is the youth chairwoman from the Partida Querida from Paraguay. Yes. And uh, I hope I managed to speak that yeah. quite <laughs> comfortably. <laughs> um, and yeah, basically, um, we want to also like chat today uh, with you two about your experiences this week. But also, what are the current developments in Latin America? And maybe we can start with you, David. Um, so what do you think? What are the main youth challenges for young people in political parties in Latin America? Well, I think um, many parties, for especially from the experience we've had, well, first, thank you for having us here, and would be maybe the growth of uh, the of individual projects within a party for in many parties in Latin America, from what I've been hearing from my, you know, the mates that were with us these days. It's definitely a challenge, right? So that growing, becoming, taking position of office and whatnot i think that would be a challenge within parties obviously having a stronger voice within the party we i like to think that in costa rica with the, our party we've done a uh, some good steps in that sense because we we actually just elected a new a executive and national executive committee from which i'm part as a treasurer but the average age is around 36 37 so i think that's a good sign in our party, we also we have nine um, congressmen, and four of them are basically young, you know. So that that is like a something that I sh I think all of our parties hopefully can have that sooner than later, right? Because obviously, I think the youth is part of the soul of a party, you know, and we need to give them more space. You know, right now I'm 31, and being probably the youngest treasurer of our party, and obviously it's a big responsibility, but it's also a big opportunity to open more doors for young people, you know. And I think we need to do that all over our countries and all over our parties in Latin America. Yeah, that's like a huge and important message that you're also sending to Europeans, because we are not also like that great with like young people in political parties and especially positions of power. Um, Paloma, we were like in the parliamentarium. We uh, actually <laughs> like looked at the number of parliamentarians between uh, eighteen and twenty nine, and we were also like quite disappointed. I need to say. Yeah. Um, so, what so are your many. experiences <laughs> from from this week, and also like um, like as a young uh, person from Paraguay? What What do you think? Well, thank you for having us. Um, well, this week was amazing. I think we all learned a lot, also from each other, but especially from I don't know. Uh, how the European Union see us, uh, us, you know, how it still sees Latin America and how we are not, uh, I don't know, um, as um, we are not partners still as we should, I guess. I don't know. Um, well, um, I just want to mention something that you just said. Um, that is why it is important for our political parties that actually the youth is uh, involved in the des in all decisions making processes and yesterday we were talking with uh, Lydia per Pereira uh, she's uh, um, one of the youngest uh, MPs we we met this week and she mentioned that yes of course um, we as young leaders we need to be where decisions are being made because also because we are the future of our parties and also all decisions that uh, are taken actually affect us. So why shouldn't be, shouldn't we? I don't know. Decide what what is going to be done. So yeah. I do believe that is a challenge we have in Latin America now. Like I see that young people they are not um, really interested in uh, working in political parties. You know, 
becoming uh, more and more involved in political parties. I do believe that we are concerned about our future. We're concerned about what is going on with our governments and everything. But I think uh, there's this gap still um, of political participation. I don't see um, a lot of young people wanting to become part of our political parties. And I think there's a shame because uh, I think political parties are crucial for our democracies and it's actually the best place to change, it, you know, it's the best place from where we can actually, actually change things. So yeah, uh, well, this week was amazing. I don't know how is your Spanish going, Jonas, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you pronounce it right. It's Patria Querida, uh, it's my political party. And yeah, I, I am, I'm really happy because I think we all learn a lot. And I'm, I'm bringing a lot of experiences with me home and I want to share it with my, with my peers from the youth. Yeah, my Spanish is definitely going better, like <laughs> probably two more weeks with you guys and uh, my Spanish <laughs> should be perfect. Uh, no, but of course, I mean, also for me as a, as a program manager here at CAS, it was really interesting to also see how, like this was the first forum for young politicians also coming from different parts of the region, coming together here in Europe and like also like uh, bringing all these different like diversity and like the different political like aspects from your countries to a forum, which I think is also um, something which I think Tanya Nunez from Argentina also mentioned that that's not happening that often and that should only be the start. And I think that was also like super interesting to listen to you this week uh, in the different talks, um, which is also kind of like a, obviously a reward for um, people like um, me or Christine from the Caspartidos um, when we kind of like do something like that. Um, but maybe focusing a little bit more also um, on, on your country's aspects uh, in this regard. Um, Paraguay, for example, has elections soon. Um, we met Gabriel Mato, MEP, this week uh, from Spain, who's going to be the election observer. Um, and we obviously also talked about Costa Rica and the political circumstances there. So what are your takeaways from like your country's perspectives um, and how the EU potentially also sees them? Like, um, do you think that Paraguay gains importance with this election observation mission, for example? Definitely. Yeah, I, I do believe that this uh, of observations, uh, you know, coming especially from the international, uh, you know, from also from, from different uh, international partners is crucial for our democracies. We do want to have uh, free elections and also a lot of transparency. And in that, uh, that the EU is present is kind of a guarantee of, of that, um, so yes, uh, I was really happy to know that uh, that, Gab that Gabriel Mato was going to be the chief of observer, and I I felt that I, it was uh, a good uh, that it was such a good thing that he actually asked me, "What do you think? What is your perspective? Where what, what are the young I don't know opinions about this and this?" Or, I think I felt hurt, you know, in a way, and um, I think these uh, elections are crucial for Para for Paraguay. Um, if I have to be, um, I don't know what the results are gonna be. You know, sometimes our, I don't know, uh, um, I don't know how to say encuesta. Polls, yeah. Yeah, the polls. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know if if we should trust what uh, our poll says, but it's a challenge because we have, we've had um, this political party called Partido Colorado, you know, ruled Paraguay for over 70 years, and now um, I think the political landscape is kind of changing. This is the first time where uh, all the opposition is actually, um, is actually supporting the other candi candidate, the opposition candidate, and we are all together as opposition uh, for the first time. So I do believe that it maybe there's going to be a transition in, in Paraguay. I do ho hope that. But yeah. Um, and another thing, Paraguayan population, uh, I, I know that there are some difference now because uh, I can see that, I don't want to say that, I'm, I'm sorry, but you guys are aging. <laughs> like, <laughs> and there's <Sorry>. no, <laughs> no, no, but in, in general, in, in Europe, there I, I do know that uh, there's a problem, that, but in, in contrast to Latin America, I can see actually young people, they are going to decide who the next government is going to be, if 
of course, they vote. So uh, I hope that will happen, that we will have a high levels of participation, and that actually the young people will, uh, will vote. I think that's crucial. Mm -hmm. But yes, Ga Gabriel Mato told me that he's going to Paraguay soon, actually three times before the, the elections, so I was trying to recommend him some nice restaurants and everything. Pa Paraguay meats uh, is the best. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, um, I think it was such a good experience to just the fact that I had the, op the opportunity to talk to them about my own country. Yeah, that's, that's really crucial. And I think also like what you, what you just mentioned, like with young people like having really like being a decisive voice, I think in Europe we will see that in the few years um, because at the moment you have like a kind of like a change also with young people slowly coming to voting age, more and more people who voted differently, for example, um, are not so um, like leaving into political parties anymore. So I think there's also change in Europe coming, and it's going to be interesting for sure to see it at the European elections next year as well. But I think also what's interesting this year is like this in general Latin American focus with the Latin American summit of what the Commission proposes to see if that really moves things forward and like also see how that uh, changes. So David, for Costa Rica, how do you see the situation? Um, what are also like your experiences from this week? Like, do you see, for example, that um, Costa Rica is on the radar of like the politicians working on uh, Latin America, or rather not? Well, with the European Commission, they definitely were informed about Costa Rica and current themes and topics, and I think they have that clear. Uh, I would say, however, part of what we've learned, which has been a lot, uh, talking to MEPs, you know, from the European People's Party. It's very interesting to meet them and to know their perspective and how they see politics, you know. But since we've been talking about center, center right parties, I, th I do think that we as Latin Americans, you know, uh, representing our parties, we definitely saw how they talk a lot between themselves in Europe and they coordinate. And I think we definitely need to do that in Latin America more. That has been a big lesson of this week. Um, I would also point out, talking about youth participation, that definitely, I mean, our parties, they do need to have ne also, I mean, obviously the leaders they have right now, but also new leaders, young people, because they, they can transform a lot of how the voting can take place. You know, they can see, th if you see different leaders that share the values and that they are n new phases within polit political systems, I think that definitely has an implication not, not only in the next election, but in the next, I don't know, 10 elections, you know, or 20 elections. So we definitely have a big area over there. Now, as for Costa Rica, I would point out, well, we had elections last year. We have um, in the our Congress, we have six parties represented. Ours is the third force right now with only one MEP less than the current government, you know. <laughs> so we, we we're happy that we are a strong party in Costa Rica, of course. But that also makes us think of how we need to project ourselves, you know, and how we need to, to grow and to transform ourselves, not only for the next election, but for the next years, you know, next decades. Costa Rica, it, ha it has an interesting phenomenon. We were, there is a, a report called the State of the Nation Report. Last year, they say that around 20% of Costa Ricans identify themselves as ambivalent between the democratic and other forms of government, you know, so... I do think that w we need to get the youth involved, you know, because young people talk to other young people and they can transform a generation. And s since CAS is such a strong force for democracy, what we can do when we talk to other young people and they learn why democracy is so important, you know, because many people just heard that from their parents or their grandparents, you know, so it's important for young people to have that conviction, you know, and to also strengthen the educational policies and to show those civic values, why democracy is important, why the rule of law is important. And definitely from these meetings, we see that Europe and Latin America share a lot of common values, you know, and I think that is also a wake-up call of why Europe and Latin America need to work a lot closer. CAS is doing that for us, and we're so thankful for it. But hopefully this can be something that all Europeans I understand, you know, that Latin America shares common values with Europe. We believe in democracy. We believe in the rule of law. 
sure we need to grow a lot more and and get it more perfect you know <laughs> but definitely i think that exchange between europe and latin america will be key not only for right now but for the future i think also it's not only like Latin America learning from Europe, but also Europe learning from Latin America, because I think this is also a mentality that like young people change a little bit more. Um, and also in our generation, we like hear more from your side also. I found it super, super useful this week to, to listen to like what you all in these discussions said, like what were your convictions, what were your like problems, what were your challenges, what you also asked the politicians for, because I think um, this is something that we can only like guess here in Europe we we cannot know that and we can only like obviously listen to you and also hear how Europe needs to change its policy towards Latin America and and also other global um regions um and i think that's that that was super helpful also for a lot of uh, the people we met so um i i think also that was a crucial part of the delegation that we had this week um maybe shifting a little bit more or do you yeah, want yeah, to I, yeah i just wanted to mention that for me it was really important uh, you know to to have the opportunity to exchange some, I don't know, some, some of our practice with mm, with the other young politicians from Latin America as well. I, I do believe that exchange, uh, you know, is this exchange of knowledge, experiences and everything, because now I know that many of the problems that we have, I don't know, as uh, young politicians are shared pro problems of the region and even in, in Europe. So maybe we can try to find some solutions but together because we shared so many things and for me like i've learned a lot from i don't know uh, mexico argentina a lot of things that i actually didn't knew and i was just uh you know right beside them so i think that we have to also um in a region we have to work together and yeah of, of course from there we can uh exchange a lot of things knowledge experiences Uh, and as he mentioned, we clearly share values. So I, so I think this this week was uh, it was a a week of learning constantly during the meetings, but also outside. You know, outside and um, in every dinner, <laughs> in every break. You know, we had breakfast every day together, and we were just talking about our countries and what is going on with the with the current political situation in every country, city, and I, I, I actually I'm surprised because we are, uh, yeah, that we have some shared problems as populism, why young people, they, it's so hard to get them actually to work uh, in politics, and I don't know, also we discuss a lot about um, the po political participation of women, and Now I'm surprised because I didn't knew that in Mexico they're they did uh, they're doing a good job uh, regarding that uh, regarding that. Uh, she mentioned that is uh, the percentage is amazing of how actually women are involved in in, in politics. And as you mentioned, uh, there are a lot of things that you guys can learn from us. Um, and yeah. Ah, for sure. I mean, what I'm writing down from that is for sure like more coordination between like uh, countries and that we can also support as CAS or as um, like European countries, but also to uh, get more groups together for a continental breakfast to uh, find new <laughs> ways of diplomacy. Of that course. was nice. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that cannot be, of course, uh, also you help. Now, but um, in general, also you, you spoke about women political participation. And I think also like when we had this huge discussion with the European Commission on that, was quite interesting to also hear these different viewpoints yeah. and, and perspectives so maybe like we can start it was like fun though because <laughs> we were all listening to them and it was actually a, a really good meeting but suddenly um what was his name um gonzalo gonzalo oh, yeah. asked something about hey but do you consider yourself a feminist or not and then the debate just started that i think it was really good because and then we didn't want it to leave because the discussion was so good and we were just Uh, we were so into it. <laughs> well, he, he was surprised of why a uh, young woman would be part of center center right parties, which yeah, that, we that, were, that, that was his question, right? So it was very interesting the fact that he asked that question, but obviously the response from our colleagues, you know, they they of course the young women being leaders and knowing why they believe in their parties and why they believe in our value values, I think that is very. I mean, it brings hope, you know of 
the next generations to come, you know. Now that you were talking about it in Costa Rica, we have 50-50 laws, you know, uh, for women to be in po in politics in in Congress. Almost half are women, like around 48% percent probably, I would say. And with the current laws, it could also happen that they could, it could be 52%, percent, you know. So I think that is also something that amazed them in the European Commission, the fact that Costa Rica and Mexico has have those laws, you know, that allow for more women participation and of course that just like we talked about youth getting more involved obviously women getting more involved is very important as a costa rican i wasn't aware of the situation in other latin american countries yeah it's mine you know where they have laws but uh, i don't know 20 percent 30 percent costa rica is 50 percent you know what the law say says so i think that it was nice you know as a, as a country to say well okay we are we're an example of how to get women <laughs> more women involved into politics, you know, and them taking the leadership. Right now, our party, the the leader of the parliamentary group of our party, is she's a young woman, you know, and that's very important. And I, I think this exchange with fellow Latin American political parties also helps in, in us letting them know about this. And, yeah, I think that is very good. Well, in, in Paraguay, um, sadly, still um, it's really low, the, the percentage of women becoming involved in, in politics, but we also discuss about how it's mostly, uh, well, it's a structural problem, also it's like, it's a systemic thing, it's, um, it's not only like, um, um, it's not only the, that if I was a woman and I wanted to become a politician, there are a lot of things that I have to, that are, that I have to think about, well, and, and, how can states actually um, um, encourage yeah in, encourage women but also he help them how will, i think it was really good to know how for example Melly, one of her colleagues here like she told me she w she is a mom she do she does have, have a family but at the same time she's a politician and how she can manage uh, the whole thing and how maybe our societies uh, Well, I'm 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 talking of far away. There's a still a lot of machism, and and maybe there's some another barriers uh, that first need to be uh, s that we need to solve this first in order to yeah, encourage women to actually uh, have a saying in 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 the political decisions. So, but we do have to have these spaces. We are you know. <laughs> Which I found Very quite important. interesting this week, like also to see like how this group interacted with like of course uh, five different um, women politicians, but also like for example David as a um, as a representative of the of the country which has actually the laws like fifty fifty <laughs> what you just said to bring them together and see like hey we're bur working from both sides in Latin America to actually achieve that and I think that's some, for example something also Europe could could learn something from how the coordination once we brought it together for only a week how easy it was to learn and exchange best practices from each other, which I found quite impressive also like when you said like you were talking with Lydia Pereira, but also in the other appointments, that it was really like this group was merging and, and really like saying, okay, like I'm from Colombia, I have this problem. How is it about Mexico? So it was also an exchange with each other, um, which I think also can, can lead to like something that how Europe changes its per perspective on Latin America in the in not only the coming months, but also the years to come if it comes to new strategic communication between Latin America and Europe. Um, and maybe like also as a, as a point for you to, um, to recognize, um, you also like said, for example, that it was super important and interesting for you, the need for cultural exchange between Europe and, um, and Latin America. So what are your kind of like political or like also like maybe cultural takeaways mm. from, from this trip uh, and this exchange, especially as a, as a Latin American young politician? Yeah, well, I, I would like to add, for example, Costa Rica's flag is, you know, based on the French, on the French, you know, our, our language comes from Spain, you know. There is a lot of things that I don't know if Europe is of aware of how influenced we, we are in Latin America by Europe. You know, and that is why I don't we think they they know. <laughs> you know, but it that they I mean, it's definitely the region that shares our va values. You know, we share common values, and I I do think that that it's very important for them to to be aware of this. You know, because we, I think we are like natural natural allies. You know, and the more that Europe hears from Latin America, the more they'll know of 
you know how much things we share and how much we admire Europe and also the fact that I mean little kids in in Costa Rica and I'm sure in Paraguay and in the rest of Latin America they definitely need to grow knowing these values you know of of democracy of the rule of law you know of strong institutions and I do believe that 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 is why we need to make some strategic alliances between uh, for example the uh, educational system in Costa Rica or in the rest of Latin America with European institutions you know because we do share the same values but we also share common struggles you know with populism with authoritarianism you know so the the need to s to fight for democracy in a positive sense you know in a nonviolent way depends a lot in the education and in culture and in this exchanges you know we have a lot of people that can have had the opportunity of studying in Europe and obviously when somebody does that they come back with a lot of, of these values and they try to promote them in in within our country. So, and not only like to study uh, something so long, just like this program, a week program has a strong impact in all of us, you know. For example, uh, the Amadeus from Venezuela is, is a good example of how we have, why Latin Americans need to be connected as political parties and as a region, because what, what has happened in Venezuela has a strong impact on the rest of, of our countries. Just Costa Rica last year had a huge migration migrational crisis due to the political crisis in, in Venezuela, you know, where thousands and thousands of people were trying to get to the U.S. And to go from Venezuela to the U.S., you need to pass through Colombia, through Panama, Costa Rica, Mexico, uh, anyway, right? You know, there are seven million Venezuelans uh, yeah, that were forced to leave the Exactly. So that is why we need to be in constant communication and in strategic alliances and share a common agenda, you know. And and I think that is not only Latin America, but also a common agenda between Europe, Europe and Latin America. Well, m now that you mentioned that, I I think it's such an opportunity that we actually uh, work closer together. Like we need to work closer together. And uh, uh, this week we, al we also had these meetings that where we talk a lot about uh, trade agreements and how the European Mercosur uh, trade agreement is being, uh, yeah, is still in a long, is still part of a long process, but I think we're, we're getting there and all the uh, positive implications that it might have for our regions, I think is an opportunity for development for us. And for you guys, I think it's a win-win it's a situation and we should, um, yeah, we definitely need to have more connections between these uh, these two regions. No, and I would just add, you know, I don't know if Europe is aware, but if you look at Latin American music, when you go to through Europe, you see how a lot of reggaeton and whatnot music is being heard. I mean, you hear it in many places. So I do think that Latin America has a strong cultural impact, and probably this is something that is not analyzed too much, but. Latin America is is gonna be a, a strategic partner, you know, with the political landscape all over the world. I do believe that there is a lot of growth that can happen in you know in the relationship between Europe and Latin America that would definitely have a strong impact here as well. Yeah, I love Latin American music. Um, can I you can dance? <laughs> probably not here. Can you but dance uh, reggaeton, salsa, bachata? <laughs> <laughs> next time when I'm when I'm doing this uh, program next time in Latin America with you guys then uh, you'll, we're gonna do you'll it definitely it. have to dance with you <laughs> that's <laughs> a promise then right yeah that's a promise okay. I'm taking that's a promise. notes um, to also like uh, reinforce EU Latin American uh, relationships maybe from both of you one recommendation like how we could actually as young people reinforce the um, EU Latin American relationship what do you think um how could we move forward and also like uh, move beyond, for example, what you learned this week, like exchange of perspectives, but like really work together? For yesterday, we were talking about um, st um, starting this connection with the JEP. Um, so we were talking about exchanging experiences, staying in contact, see how we can support uh, each other's uh, elections, local election, for example. What can we? Uh, what can we? Uh, organize together, maybe even some share uh, communicals. Yeah, the, yeah, like uh, statements. Statements. So I think we we n we still need uh, these uh, allies 
on the other side, and it was such a good thing that we got to meet uh, this young politician from Europe. So of course, uh, we need to build bri bridges between our, our our regions, and I think we are we are key. You know, we are in a in a century where uh, it's so easy. I can just call you. I can. Uh, message you. We are all connectors, so of course we can do a lot of things and um, using internet and yeah, we should definitely keep in touch and see what can we do together. Um, yeah, we can learn from each other all the time. You know, just knowing that our parties share common values and common p uh, agendas and whatnot, I think that helps every single country. Like right now in this a week we saw like what's going on in Mexico, what's going on in Colombia, you know, and in all of our six countries, you know, and I do believe that it would be very interesting for European politicians, European youth politicians to go and visit our countries when we have elections or get get to know our parties, and obviously for us, for our young people to also get to know how European politics work, and, you know, and just be aware of the fact that we are probably f fighting this, the same fight, you know. And then uh, we want the same democracy. We want the same limited government. We want the same fiscal responsibility, the same security goals and whatnot. So I think that exchange, it's fu fundamental, you know. And, and in the moment that European uh, politicians, they see that in Latin America, they have people that think th the way they do. I think that will have also a big, you know, it will create a huge opportunity for us to be more connected and, you know, and, and get those statements together, joint statements and whatnot, and, and just be aware of the fact that you have a lot of friends in Latin America that definitely value that friendship. Yeah, thanks so much to both of you. It was really inspiring to listen to you, especially also like listening to like building bridges, exchanges. Um, I hope we can move forward with this, and I'm obviously also like super happy that you were both part of this program. Um, I think we chose uh, the right people. Um, Obviously, that was not uh, only <laughs> us, but also the Caspartidos. Yeah, and thanks also to Caspartidos and, and the CasMnet for uh, the possibility of um, doing such an exchange. It was really inspiring uh, to meet all these like young politicians from Latin America. And uh, I learned a lot. And um, thank you for joining today for this podcast. Thank, thank you for, for all this experience. And, and now... Um, I'm going back home with a lot of uh, things to tell my part, my my peers, and yeah, we shall definitely keep in touch. And uh, something else before I forget: yesterday we were talking why is it so important that we, as young politicians, are part of this um, um these programs because if we want to become good politicians, then we need to uh, be prepared for it, and these spaces is what we need. So I hope that more and more uh, people from Latin America will come and have this. Yeah, definitely. I, w I want to thank Cass, you know, and well, obviously you, Jonas, and everybody who made this possible because we've learned so much. You know, we've had so high-level meetings that, that are really inspiring and, and really renews our commitment, you know, to keep on fighting in our countries for, for democracy, for, for our ideas, you know, and... Hopefully, the more we have of this, not only of Latin Americans coming to Europe, but also of Europeans coming to Latin America, I think the more we can help transform the world for the better, you know, which I think is part of what CAS does, you know, and you know, I just want to thank CAS, you know, from, for what they do in Uruguay, what they do in Costa Rica, what they do here in Europe. I, I believe that it's, it's such a, you know, such an inspiring effort you know and, and we really appreciate it and it really makes a difference you know and if we really believe in democracy and we want democracy to exist everywhere we definitely need to join forces thanks so much both of you Gracias.